Hi, Dear Doers. Submitting a tax report is a legal requirement common to all businesses. However, how tax reports and returns are generated varies from one country to another. For example, Belgium uses a grid-based system that generates tax reports, but Odoo supports various other systems. To understand tax reports better, let's see how taxes and accounts are handled. Take a customer invoice as an example. The total amount the customer owes is 121 euros and is therefore booked into the account receivable. However, the 121 euros is split into two elements, a base amount of 100 euros and the tax amount of 21 euros as our tax rate is 21%. The 100 euros represents my actual income and must be booked into the income account, whereas the 21 euros is a tax collected on behalf of the government and charged to my customer, which must be booked in the tax received account. The opposite behavior happens for vendor bills. So throughout the fiscal period, the tax received and the tax paid accounts will increase after each bill or invoice we book in our accounting. As we close this fiscal period, we want to balance or settle our tax accounts so that the new period can start with zero. With this done, we can now calculate our taxes by simply doing the sum of the taxes received and the taxes paid, and the remaining amount goes to the VAT current account. If it's positive, we have to pay, and if it's negative, we can claim it. Let's take a look at it in Odoo. So the first thing we'll do is create a dedicated journal for our tax closing entries. We can do that by going into Accounting, Configuration, and Journals, and clicking New. We're going to call this one Tax Closing, and we'll set the type to be miscellaneous. We also need to give it a short code, so we'll just go with Tax. We'll save this, and now that we have our dedicated tax closing journal, we can go to our settings. And here we can select that journal for our tax return. You can select whichever periodicity works best for your business, but we'll be using quarterly. So if we save this, then we now have the option to configure your tax accounts. And if you click on this, we can see all of our tax groups and our tax payable and tax receivable accounts. These are what make it possible to automate the tax closing process. Next, we'll take a look at the tax report under the reporting menu. And this might look a little different based on your localization, but here you can see the Belgian tax report with all of its tax grids. We have the option to filter this by this month, this quarter, this financial year, or even any specific date so we can see exactly what we're looking for. And we can download it either as a PDF or Excel or XML file. We can also click this closing entry button. And we'll see here that we're using the journal and the tax default accounts that we saw earlier. If this closing entry is generated but not yet posted, you can still post more invoices and bills from this period and add them to this entry, either by clicking on the refresh option here or by clicking on the closing entry button again from the tax report. So next we'll post this, post this report and you'll see some options here that apply to the Belgian localization, but I'll just go ahead and post. So now that we've done that, let's take a look at our lock dates in the accounting menu. There are a few different lock dates, but the important one for our purposes here is the tax return lock date. This prevents any user from creating or modifying journal entries with tax entries so that the tax so that the tax unchanged. So I'll just set that for today. One important thing to remember is that while separate companies can have separate fiscal periods and lock dates, any branches or subsidiaries will share the same fiscal period as their parent company, but they can have their own lock dates. So what if I post an invoice or a bill prior to the lock date, but after having posted the tax reports? Great question. Let's take a look. So we'll create a new vendor bill from our dashboard. 
and we'll make it out to plant world. And we're going to set the build date sometime from last month so that it's before the tax lock date that was already set. We'll add some products on here. And you see that we get a warning message explaining that the date is set prior to the tax lock date and that the journal entry will actually hit the books after the lock date once it's been posted. And do you have any recommendations as to the um, lock date order and the optimal use? Yes. So we recommend starting with the least restrictive lock date and moving towards the most restrictive. So that would be first the tax return lock date while you start preparing your closing journal entry so no other entries can be added that would affect the tax report. Then the journal entries lock date so non-accountant users can't add any journal entries, even non-tax ones. And finally, the all users lock date. So that's it for this video on the tax report. Be sure to check out our other videos to see how it works with the rest of the accounting application. This has been your pal Dal. I'll see you in the next one.